My name is uh, Camino and I come from the University of Leon, from the Robotics Group. And I'm going to present a uh, development we made in order for um, developing haptic uh, simulators for teaching and, le and learning. Um, I don't know how many of you have uh, ever uh, tried a haptic device. One, two, not a lot. Well, the thing is that... Um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> You do not have the feedback, so it's not really a haptic device. The thing is that uh, the important part in here is uh, that we are uh, dealing with haptic devices, which are devices that transmit the uh, sense of touch, of touch back to the user. So, <clears throat> our context is a haptic simulation. Uh, you can see there, uh, there's a doctor uh, trying to perform some, some surgery on that uh, piece of rubber or something like that, but he is uh, watching on the screen what he would be uh, really uh, watching in, uh, during a, a real surgery, but he is working with uh, those two devices. You can see the, the white uh, one and the uh, gray one. Those are haptic devices. They are like uh, small robots. What they have inside are uh, uh, motors that transmit uh, to you the, some forces that recreate uh, what uh, you feel when you touch something, right? That is difficult to explain because the sense of touch um, is something that uh, everyone gives uh, for granted and you do not pay much attention to it. But in fact, for instance, for surgery, it's a, a, a very important one. In fact, uh, many times it's uh, the sense that the surgeon pays more attention to, even uh, more than to what he is uh, watching. And um, inside uh, haptic simulation, uh, we want to use uh, simulators as e-learning tools. Because uh, there are many uh, specific simulators for, for many fields, uh, surgery one is uh, one of the biggest, and, um, but they just uh, try to reproduce some part of the real world, and that's it. So if I want to train uh, someone in performing like uh, uh, some, I don't know, needle injection or something like that, I, I just... Uh, make a simulation for, for that specific part in order for my students just to practice. Instead of uh, doing it with a real body, doing it with a simulator, right? But that's it. What we found is that um, haptic simulation is by now uh, something that is not too complex. I mean, uh, applications uh, focus on just one specific task and that's it. Okay. But we want to go one step further and I want to use simulators as learning tools. We want that, um, that uh, simulations um, would act as if the teacher, if the, if the surgeon was uh, really there with the student uh, telling him uh, what he is doing right or wrong and giving some feedback, as well as uh, grading them in order uh, for them to know uh, how they are improving their skills from one session to the next one. For our proof of concept, we have uh, chosen surgery because at University of Leon we do not have medicine studies, but we uh, have uh, veterinary studies. And for them, it's uh, even uh, more important to have uh, simulators because they do not have only one anatomy, like in human medicine, they, but they have a lot of anatomies. And the only way for, for them to be able to practice in any uh, environment is to simulate them. So, uh, first of all, previous to the work I am presenting here, we developed uh, what we call SULE, which is a surgical haptic learning environment. 
uh, we defined an, an architecture that would be like uh, an upper layer to put on top of uh, haptic simulators in order for making them uh, learning and teaching tools. <clears throat> the main parts of uh, our, our work, of course, the, the specific anatomy of uh, every simulator, and um, besides that, the specific procedure that is going to take place on that, uh, on that anatomy. And um, as long as we want our simulators to be e-learning e tools, we have to capture the knowledge uh, expertise of the surgeon uh, and to introduce it in our system. All, all this work has been already presented and you can uh, take a look at our uh, uh, papers to, to get a detailed look into it. We also have to include the, the assessment part of the, of the simulator in order for both the student to know uh, how good he is doing it and in order for the teacher to know how good their students are, are uh, working with the specific um, surgery. Our requirements uh, are that uh, we do not want to develop uh, just one specific simulator, but we want to um, have a whole procedure for uh, building haptic simulators for no matter what uh, uh, anatomy and no matter what uh, specific surgery. So we want it, uh, all of it to be reusable, simple enough for anyone to be able to build a new haptic simulator in a short period of time and to be scalable um, because um, specific simulators usually uh, take into account a very simple uh, task and what, what we want is to make that task uh, more complex because a whole surgery is not a, a simple task at all and we want a whole surgery to be uh, represented in our simulators. But when we began to do that, of course, uh, we have already uh, developed the Schule part, but that's on top of the, of the whole thing. And we found that from our top application to the low level application where the device, the haptic device is, and the graphical part and the physics and all that, there was a, a big hole in there. So uh, we tried to fill that gap with the work I am presenting now. It's a C++ development, it's like uh, 40,000 lines of code, you can check it in uh, GitHub. And this is the, the whole architecture. We have, uh, in the upper part, we have the top level applications, that would be our uh, haptic simulator, but any other, uh, any other application for, what, uh, for which um, haptics could be used. And then we have, uh, on, on, on the bottom, we have, uh, in this case, we used a, a game engine uh, for abstracting the whole procedure of, uh, like, uh, taking actions uh, and going from one state to another state and things like that, so that we needed, in the middle, something to communicate both of them. So we developed what we call uh, H-Core, like a haptic core, and uh, this part is in, in charge of uh, offering the upper level an uh, interface uh, simple enough so that uh, anyone that is uh, uh, in charge of develop a complex application do not have to deal with uh, very low level uh, tasks as uh, um, taking care of the camera or the haptic device, that would be the resource manager, or the input and output, uh, the mouse, the keyboard, etc. And so, what we provide is a, a, a quite complex architecture. You know, in the original paper we presented, uh, we had all the UML uh, diagrams included in the paper, but 
then the paper was like uh, 12 uh, pages long, so uh, we were told to cut it to eight. So all the all the UML uh, diagrams were removed. But if you are interested, just ask. And uh, mainly this uh, event handling uh, handling uh, was was detailed. Okay, but the thing is that. Uh, the, the one person that is uh, creating a new simulator does not have to care about that part, okay? That is already implemented. So, the, the outcome of all of this is that for creating and configuring a new application, in, that, in, that, in, in this case, for our example, we, we have just done a, a mock simulator for the cataract surgery, and it's just an example. So the following 10 steps that I am presenting now, uh, you will uh, get to a haptic simulator. Okay. So the first step would be uh, selecting the type of simulator, what you are going to, to simulate. And the second step would be setting up the working environment. In our case, uh, it was a C++ library developed with Visual Studio 2010. And, um, of course, each core library has to be added to your new project. What we have uh, uh, gained in here is that the compiling time is uh, uh, reduced like 90% using the already library. You have to add those boost because it's also used. And maybe this is too detailed and I am running out of time, So, but for you to, to see how simple it is, you just have to, to complete some specific classes that uh, extend from much uh, uh, from the abstract ones. So you only have to focus on what your simulator is doing. In fact, you have to focus on which parts of the anatomy of uh, your model of the real world uh, has to be uh, studied with, with listeners and observers and all that. You initialize uh, your your actions. You decide which listeners do I need. What do do I want to know about what the user is doing uh, with the simulator? And then I start uh, rendering. You just run the simulator, and then you have a main, etc. And you modify the scene configuration file depending on what you want to be on that scene, and. You configure the fault properties and messages, which is which are the messages the both the student and the teacher will be getting from the interaction, and then you will have uh, something like this. Of course, it's a uh, it's just uh, a mock uh, application. You know, we have the eye, we have uh, one tool for the surgery. We are not great designers. In fact, uh, designers is what we really need more and. That's all for my part. Thank you.